as a beginning Java programmer, your ultimate goal is to get to the point where you can start to tackle the Java exercises on CodingBat.com on your own. But most beginning Java programmers find these exercises too difficult to jump right into. So we've put together a set of 15 Boolean logic problems that we call the Boolean Logic Lab to help you transition into the coding bat. Before you do the Boolean Logic Lab, however, it is strongly recommended you watch this logic video that will give you some additional hints on how to work with Boolean Logic in Java using a BlueJ IDE. Let's start our discussion of Boolean Logic by looking at a simple math expression. Here we have the expression x is greater than 4 and less than 5. You might be tempted when coding an expression like this to code it just as it is. But not only will this not work, it will not even compile. The problem here is that the two less than operators are binary operators. They require two distinct operands, one on the left and one on the right. The problem with this expression from a computer science standpoint is that these two operators are going to start fighting over the x as to which one owns it as an operand. How can we transition this into a computer science expression? Well, the clue comes if we read it in English. We would say that x is greater than 4 and x is less than 5. The clue is in the word and. All we need to do is restate the expression and separate the x so that it is no longer shared between the two operators. We simply need to make a separate copy of x and put the key Boolean operator and in the middle. For our next Boolean expression issue, let's take a look at a simple piece of code. Here I have a main program that calls this method called isBigger. isBigger is a Boolean method and it's supposed to return true if the first argument is bigger than the second argument. Let's take a look at inside isBigger. It says if x is greater than y, return true. And then it says if x is less than or equal to y, return false. Can you see anything wrong with this construct? Well, from a mathematical standpoint, it certainly looks like a good algorithm. But notice this red block right here, as uh, BlueJ is telling us that there is a logic error in this uh, code that we've written. If we click on it, we can see that it says it's missing a return statement. And this might at first seem puzzling to a new programmer, because you can see that both cases here are accounted for, and I've got return statements associated with each one. The problem, which is not that easy for a new programmer to spot, is that even though a human being can tell that one of these two cases must be true, and so one of these two return statements is always going to execute, the compiler cannot tell that this is the case. And the compiler is wondering what to do if we reach this part of the code right here, and it doesn't know what to return. Now one way to easily solve this problem is to put in a fake return statement like this, knowing fully well that the code will never actually get here. But this results in some code that never executes and is hard to read, and otherwise not a good idea. Here are two much better solutions. One thing we can do is replace this second if with an else statement. Now you can see that the code will compile fine. Another even simpler solution is to get rid of the else altogether and to just leave the return false at the bottom. Now if x is bigger than y, it will return true, but if the code ever reaches this point, we know that the answer must be false. One other problem we want to point out for beginning programmers, even though it's not really so much a problem with Boolean logic, is if you start to write code that is unreachable. Look at this line of code right here that says integer i equals 7. Notice it's placed after a return statement. It is impossible to ever get here because this return statement or this return statement will always execute and we will return from this method. So there's no way to get here. When you write code that's unreachable, it will not compile. Notice over here once again we have the red and here, if you click on the uh, red underlining, it will tell you that you've written an unreachable statement. For our last and final set of hints, let's say you're given the charge of writing a piece of code to count the number of sevens included uh, in the parameters given to a method. 
here we see we have a main method and it's calling this other method that is supposed to count the sevens. We give it three different operands and it's supposed to return how many of the operands are sevens. Here you can see if we call it with 747, seven, the answer should be two because two of these are sevens. We now have to write this code. Most beginning Java programmers approach the problem using if statements, something like this. You can see it's going to take quite a large number of if statements to try and figure out all the different combinations uh, of return values to have here. It turns out that there's a much simpler way to solve this problem, and this solution is going to be useful to you for a lot of the Boolean logic lab problems, as well as some of the problems on coding bat. Instead of trying to figure out every possible combination for the solution, it's easier if we try to solve the problem by thinking about it the same way that a human being thinks about it. What we're going to do is we're going to look at each of these operands in turn, and we're going to see if it's a seven or not, and if it is, we're going to keep tabs on how many sevens we've got so far. So to do that, let's first start by creating an answer variable. and setting it to zero because before we've examined any of the parameters, we can't really tell if any of them are sevens. Now let's look at the first parameter. And if it happens to be a seven, this X, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna increment this variable, which is our answer variable. We're now going to do the same for the other two parameters. And now as we get to this part in the code, the answer that this method is supposed to return is conveniently stored in this variable. So all we have to do is return it. Now you can see I've simply counted the number of sevens here by looking at each one in turn. If we were to add three more parameters to this method, I'd only need three more if statements to update the method to keep working. Let's run this now and test it. I have to fix one other small error. This is missing a return type. Okay, now let's compile and run it. And you can see it's counting the number of sevens just fine. So with this bag of tricks behind you, you're now in a position to start the Boolean logic lab. Music